Greetings, booktubers, and welcome back to Grammaticus Books. The video we got going today is about a great author, Carl Edward Wagner, and his great fantasy creation, one of the greatest fantasy creations, characters of all time, Cain, uh, the Mystic Swordsman. So if you're going to talk Cain, you've got to have, in Carl Edward Wagner, you've got to have a big honking sword next to you, or in this case, uh, maybe a short sword. And you should be drinking a beer to go with it as well. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a beer. I just have uh, water with me today, which is a bit of a party foul when you're talking cane. But I'm going to go ahead and take the hit on that one. So we're going to be ranking uh, the cane novels, the 1970 novels that came out, the first five, which I consider to be the essential cane novels. And we're going to be ranking them from five to one. And before anybody gets their underwear in a knot, there is no such thing as a bad cane novel. Um, all of these novels are an 8 plus at least on a scale of 1 to 10. But I do have an opinion on which ones are better than others. And I'm going to go ahead and rank them for you and then give my reasons for why I've got them ranked in that order. If you're not familiar with Cain, Cain is a mystic swordsman. He's a swordsman and a sorcerer. And he's Cain from Cain and Abel. He's that Cain. Uh, as Wagner describes him, he's been cursed by an elder, elder god to wander the earth for immortality. Um, he is a anti-hero, and when I say an anti-hero, he is an anti-hero's anti-hero. These stories are very, very dark. They are so dark, I would call them grim dark. And there is no redeeming qualities to Cain at all. He is all about self-promotion, although occasionally he does find himself thrust into the role of a protector and fighting on the side of good. But believe me, that is always due to circumstances beyond his control, and that's not his motivation for being there. So that's Kane, and there were five novels that came out in the 1970s by Carl Edward Wagner. I'm going to go through the novels and uh, show them to you in publication order so you can see the novels that we're talking about and when they came out. Uh, then we'll go ahead and we'll rank them from five to one. So in publication order, the first Kane novel is Death Angel's Shadow, which is actually a novella. It's three novellas collected into one. Uh, that was published in 1973, and then Wagner followed that up in 1975 with the first full-length novel, Bloodstone. After Bloodstone, in 1976, a year later, he published Dark Crusade. And then after Dark Crusade, another full-length novel, 1978, Darkness Weaves. And then the fifth novel, which also came out in 1978, was Night Winds, and this was a collection of short stories. So ranking these from five to first, starting off with uh, number five, and then working our way up to number one. At number five, coming in is Dark Crusade number five, which is about Cain as a general in charge of a uh, horde of peasants that have been recruited over into a violent religion and they have been sent out on a path of mayhem and death and destruction and rapine. And of course, Cain has his own motivations for being the general in charge of this army. Um, but the reason I put Dark Crusade at number five is, I, I'm not going to say it has a failure to launch, but it certainly has a delayed launch to the start of the story. Uh, Wagner really takes his time setting up the, uh, political, uh, the political intrigues between the nations that are involved in the book. And it goes on for a bit too long, if you ask me. In addition, I have the Dark Crusade plot arc. I think uh, there's better ones for a mystic swordsman who's been around for a thousand years. I didn't care for the religious bent to it. Um, it's kind of a, a plot line. I think it's been done quite a bit. And at first I had a problem with how fast the peasantry is converted over, almost overnight in the book, to being this horde of uh, murderous religious zealots. Uh, and then I kind of took a step back from it and put it into a historical context and uh, you think about the Children's Crusade in Europe, or you think about the original Muslim invasions of North Africa and the Middle East, and you're like, yeah, okay, maybe I'll give you that one. But for those reasons, that's why I've put Dark Crusade coming in first, uh, the first entry at number five. So what is the number four novel? Number four is Death Angel's Shadow. Wagner's first book from 1973 in a collection of three novellas. The second novella in this book, which is called Cold Light, and it's the longest one in the book, is fantastic. Cold Light is just a tremendous story. It's about uh, Gayatha. 
Gaatha is a paladin who is in charge of a group of crusaders who goes around just destroying evil wherever he finds it. And while he's on his crusade of destroying evil, he learns of Cain, the ultimate scourge, and he makes it his life's goal, his crowning achievement, to find and kill Cain. So he tracks Cain to a remote village that has been decimated by disease. It's out in the middle of nowhere, and he and his crusader band come into this village, and they start hunting Cain, and they start using the villagers that are there um, in order to try to flush Cain out and bring him out so they can kill him. And the entire story is really about uh, an analysis of the end justifying the means and how far you can push that envelope until you've become the thing that you're trying to destroy, where your means have gotten so so malignant, uh, so evil that you become the evil that you're actually trying to destroy. And Carl Edward, Edward Wagner was, say that 10 times fast, uh, Carl Edward Wagner was a psychiatrist by trade, and you can see a lot of that uh, background that he has going into the story. And it's just a wonderful story. It's a great story. And this is actually one of those stories where Cain finds himself thrust into the role of protector. Um, not by his choice. He's just sort of forced into it. It's not his main motivation for being there, but he does become a protector of the town. So why number four then? If that's such a great story, and it is, it's a great story, Cold Light, the Cold Light of Justice, as Gaatha likes to say, uh, hence the title of that uh, novella. Well, it's because that novella, Cold Light, is sandwiched between two other novellas that uh, aren't nearly as good as Cold Light. They're not bad, but they're not as good as Cold Light. And so for that reason, I have Death Angel Shadow at number four. So that brings us to number three. Number three is Darkness Weaves. And this is a story of Red Kane. Red Kane, the piratical uh, mercenary who is uh, hired by an evil sorceress who is trying to exact revenge upon a tyrant king. And she wants Kane to be in charge of her armies and her fleets, and you get a lot of naval battles on this one that are just fantastic. You've got Lovecraftian monsters that come up. Um, it's a wonderful book. Uh, the sorceress, at one point, she summons a demon, and the demon comes up and gives her the entire back history of Cain through the ages, which is just fantastic. This is an excellent book. The reason I put it at number three, and it didn't get quite a bit higher, is it's a bit long at 284 pages. This is the longest Kane novel, and frankly, it goes a little too long in spots. But it's a solid novel, it's a great Kane novel, and it comes in right in the middle at number three. So what's number two? We're getting into the upper echelon, the top two in our entries. Number two is Bloodstone, the 1975 first full-length Kane novel. And this is Kane at his worst. This is Kane as an anti-hero from start to finish, and there's some just brutal scenes in this book. Cain is after the Bloodstone. The Bloodstone is a on a ring, and it's an artifact of immense uh, sorceress power, and Cain wants it. He wants it so that he can launch his own conquest of the, of the world and take things over. So this ring has been lost. It's been lost near a, uh, a swamp, a temple that's located in this remote swamp. And this swamp is infested with giant toad and frog-like creatures that are just murderous. So in order to get it, Cain puts together a band of companions who are generally good people, good heroes, and he takes this band of heroes into the swamp to try to help him get back this ring. And this band of companions sacrifices almost everything in order to get him there. Uh, they're loyal to Cain the whole way, and once they get there, Cain will just sacrifice them without a moment's hesitation, without an ounce of remorse. I want to say this is the story where... They're down to one of these guys is left of his companions, who's a, a true hero. And the guy's like, look, we have to go back out of this swamp to get more help. And it's a suicide mission. Cain tells him, all right, go ahead. Knowing that he can't live, he's going to die if he tries to go back through these hordes of, of uh, swamp creatures, these frogs, these killer frogs, on his own, that he's a dead man. And he sets out. And as he's setting out, suddenly Cain throws a spear right through the middle of his back, kills him. And as he's dying, Cain turns to him and goes, I'm sorry, but there was a chance you might have made it. Because he didn't want him to bring back a bunch of guys that were going to interfere with him getting the Bloodstone. So he gets the Bloodstone, and then the novel goes on and has a bunch of twists and turns. It's fantastic stuff. It's kind of like a, 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 role, a great role-playing game uh, adventure come to life in a very, very dark vein that's just done fantastically by uh, Carl Edward Wagner. And speaking of role-playing games... In 1975, 
Dave Arneson published Blackmore, the first supplement to the original Dungeons and Dragons rules. And in this 1975 publication, there is a mini adventure called The Temple of the Frog that puts a temple in the middle of a uh, remote swamp that is infested with giant frog-like, murderous frog-like beings. And I can't help but think that one of these influenced the other. The, the similarities are, are just too close. Both came out in 1975. I don't know which one came out first, um, but I love the fact that maybe these, uh, these publications actually influenced each other. So that's number two, Bloodstone. And that leaves us with number one. And if you've been paying attention, the last book left is Night Winds by Carl Edward Wagner, his collection of short stories. I am a sucker for a good collection of short stories. And Night Winds has two of the best short stories uh, that I've ever read. These are all great short stories, but there are two that stand head and shoulders above the others uh, in Night Winds. And the first one is The Dark Muse. And the Dark Muse puts Cain into a completely different role. It puts him into the role of a patron of the arts. He's in a city and he has a poet that he's befriended. And this poet comes to Cain because he wants Cain to help him write the most beautiful poem ever. And when we say the most beautiful poem ever, I'm not talking roses and love. He wants to write a poem about death, uh, evil, and destruction because he thinks that that is like the most beautiful thing in life. And he wants Cain to use his sorcery in order to help him have experiences that can make him write or allow him to write that perfect poem. And Cain agrees. And it's just fantastic. It's a fantastic story. It puts Cain, it, sh it shows Cain in a completely different light from a lot of his other stories where he's uh, just the swordsman uh, cleaving a path through his enemies, where he is this cultured, educated person uh, who actually does have an interest in literature because he's been al alive for a thousand years and has just this tremendous base of knowledge. And that's a great story. I highly recommend The Dark Muse. And then the other story in here that is head and shoulders above the best uh, is Two Suns Setting. And that's Cain. He's traveled into the hinterlands and he's gone to find the, uh, the kingdom of the elder race of giants. And he goes there seeking them out and he finds the last of the elder race of giants. And it's just Cain and this last giant having a conversation on the nature of heroism. And it's just an excellent book. It's an excellent little short story put together by Carl Edward Wagner on the nature of heroism. And then at the end of it, there's a fantastic battle scene and it has a great ending to it that'll stick with you for a long time. Um, speaking of these short stories, I forgot to mention something about the Dark Muse, uh, the one with the poet here in Night Winds. Carl Edward Wagner does a definition of what makes a beautiful poem in this story that is just fantastic. It's a must read. And so for those reasons, I've got Night Winds, the collection of short stories by Carl Edward Wagner as my top Kane novel. If you guys have different opinions on which novels are best, I would love to hear them. Put them down in the comments section and uh, give me your reasoning. I do uh, read all the comments and I'll get back to you on them. But you can't, you look at these novels here. One of the things that drove, them to, or drove me to them or drew, drew me to them, I should say, were the fantastic Frazetta covers. All of these have Frazetta covers. And there's a couple in here that I think are just outstanding. Um, the first one is that Dark Crusade cover. That's a pretty famous one. It was on the uh, front of the Molly Hatchet cover, their album cover by uh, the band Molly Hatchet. And I recently had an opportunity to buy that album. I could have picked it up for 15 bucks just for that uh, cover artwork on there. And like a fool, I passed on it. But I love that painting. The one here by Frank Frazetta with Bloodstone. That's a classic. It's almost become cliche, but Frank Frazetta is the one who made this cliche, and nobody can draw that type of a painting like Frank Frazetta. He's just uh, the top of his game doing that. And then you got Death Angel's Shadow, which is a little unusual because you don't have Kane as a, as a large central figure, but this is just a masterclass right here in how to make a composition for a fantasy painting. It's just stupendous. I love those. Those are fantastic. So that is the five ranked novels. But I'm gonna talk a little bit about Carl Edward Wagner as well. Carl Edward Wagner was a very dark guy. Uh, he had a, a massive alcohol problem that wound up killing him. Uh, it was either 1994 or 1995 when he passed away from alcoholism. And uh, that darkness really made it into his stories. If you are interested in learning about uh, Carl Edward Wagner, he was a very interesting person as well. 
he uh, edited horror and uh, fantasy stories and he wrote horror and fantasy stories um, and was just a brilliantly sharp guy and he did not tolerate fools. But there was a documentary that was made on him if you want to learn more about him. Uh, it's available on Vimeo. It's called The Last Wolf. I get nothing from Vimeo. They don't know that I'm doing this. Um, I've watched it myself. It's excellent. I think you can rent it for three dollars. I'll put a link to The Last Wolf, a documentary on Carl Edward Wagner down in the description below. And if you want to learn more about him, go ahead and check it out. It's very interesting. It interviews his family members, his closest friends, and uh, the people that he worked with as authors in the fantasy and horror world. And it's really good. So check that out if you feel like it, if you feel up to it. Speaking of checking these novels out, if you want to get these novels and read them yourself, you, you should if you haven't. They are absolutely one of the, the pillars of the fantasy world. Unfortunately, these paperbacks, now you used to be able to find these out in the, uh, in the used bookstores. About five years ago, you could walk in and you could still find these for about $5 sitting on the shelf occasionally. It was rare, but you could pick them up. Now, I mean, they're as rare as hen's teeth. And if you go onto eBay to get these, they're going to run you, they're going to run you a minimum, a minimum of $25 to $40, and that's before shipping. So they're really expensive if you're trying to buy these paperback versions. I loaned this one out to a friend, and it came back a little worse for wear. Don't loan out rare books. There's a little tip for you. Um, the collected hardbound editions that came out in the 90s are beautiful, um, but that's going to cost you a full C note to come in at those. Um, but there is good news. These are all available on e-reader. You can get them on e-reader for $5. And if you want to dip your toe into the world of cane and check it out and see if it's something you like, that would be the way to go. And if you don't want to drop a minor fortune on these books, again, the e-readers is absolutely the way to go. Uh, but that's it. That's uh, my review of the first five cane novels. I hope you liked it. And other than that, take care, be safe, and I'll catch you guys in the future.